1986 North Star Nationals. Speeds in excess of 270 miles an hour, covering the quarter mile distance in less than six seconds. Drag racing from the NHRA. Welcome to the heartland of North America, Minnesota, where agriculture and related businesses are the economic mainstay. Legend has it that Paul Bunyan and his giant blue ox babe made their way through this part of the country, leaving their footprints behind them, and that's why there are so many lakes throughout Minnesota. But whatever the reason, people come from all over the country to sample the recreation this state provides. Hello everybody, I'm Dave McClelland and welcome to Brainerd International Raceway. Located in the heart of the land of 10,000 lakes, Brainerd International Raceway is hosting the 5th annual Quaker State North Star Nationals. Over a half million dollars in prize money has been posted and that's created an intense level of competition. To find out what's been going on, let's go to the far end of this racetrack and join our working partner, Steve Evans. Dave, first round action has just been completed in the pro categories, and drivers will tell you that first round can be as intense as a final round, kind of like the opening night of a Broadway show. Well, Tom Hooper and his crew, the pressure is off them as far as first round is concerned. They have moved into the second. But the big news in funny car action in round number one, world champion and points leader Kenny Bernstein red-lighted. Now, that's the first red light Bernstein has given up in a couple of seasons. He qualified low here with a brand new track record for Brainerd International Raceway at 5.63 speed record at 257 miles an hour but as you can see he left just a taste too soon and gave that first bound victory to billy meyer now the most terrifying moment of this event also happened in first round of funny car action in the near lane it was norm day racing tim gross gross won the race handily but unbeknownst to him norm day had big problems the engine blew just past the finish line the car caught on fire the fire built in intensity until Day was forced to turn it sideways to try to scrub off some speed. He accidentally got it off of the racetrack. The car rolled 360 degrees. Now the roof hit very hard and that probably disabled the escape hatch NHRA requires. So he had no way to get out of the car. The first man on the scene, the man who beat him, Tim Gross. Now Gross wearing the same kind of suit that Norm Day has on inside that inferno, kicked and slashed at the body, trying to get an exit hole for his friend Day, but could not do it. Tim knew the only people that could put out this fire and get day out was the NHRA safety safari. Steve, the safety safari team members jumped into the thick of the fire and pulled Norm Day from the burning wreckage. The medical specialists were right on the scene checking on Day's condition. As we look again from another camera viewpoint, Day's burning car slid off the racetrack, overturning in the grass. The car made one complete roll and came to rest on four wheels making it easier for the emergency crews to get inside the burning car and get Day out of the inferno. The good news, Dave, the hospital reports that Norm Day has minor burns. He will be released this afternoon. Unbelievable. And kudos to the men who design and build those five-layer fire suits. It saved Norm Day's life, no question about it. Steve, I'll second that. In the first round of Top Fuel, the low qualifier Daryl Gwynn on the far side of the track lined up against Gene Snow. Gwynn had set a track record, but when it came to this first race, it was Snow getting the advantage at the start. Gwynn smoked the tires and was unable to catch the veteran Snow at the finish line. A big upset in Top Fuel racing. Coming up next was the new car of Joe Amato. Always trying something new, Amato's car got a close-up look from Steve. The most interesting design feature on the nose of Joe Amato's new top fuel dragster are these ground effects tunnels on either side. Air is channeled from underneath the car through these tunnels, and that provides downforce. Also different on Joe's car is this little lip you see around the body, much like the funny cars use, again, to provide downforce. Now, you'll notice the nose comes to a peak there. Well, that's for a purpose. That is to block the electronic beam at the starting line. Also notice that the nose is exactly as wide as the rear track of the car. So once you punch that hole in the air, you drive the entire car through it. You don't have any interruption from the rear tires. Now, Joe knows that all this works. He knows that there's five pounds of downforce, even if the front end is two feet in the air, because he wind tunnel tested all of this. Well, kind of a wind tunnel. He cut the half off an old car, mounted the nose, built a platform on the roof of a pickup truck, applied, applied pressure sensors, and drove 100 miles an hour in the pickup truck. So he figures he got about $10,000 worth of wind tunnel time for $3 worth of gasoline. 
Steve. That's ingenuity in action. Amato was racing against Shirley Baldani. His car may not have been performing as well as he wanted in qualifying, as Shirley was several spots higher, thus earning the lane choice, and that may have been a deciding factor. Amato smoked the tires. Shirley pulled away to an easy win, recording a 5.50 second elapsed time at over 255 miles an hour. Meantime, track records and upsets prevailed in Pro Stock. You saw Bob Glidden win Pro Stock in our USA Network coverage of the Mile High Nationals in Denver, Colorado. Well, Glidden came back to sea level with the same authority. Two new track records here at BIR in qualifying, 7.56 seconds, 186 miles per hour, and Glidden just easily waltzed through round number one. But another superstar did not. It was a first-year pro, Stan Mizell, defeating Warren Johnson. Mizell clocked a 7.72 second elapsed time over Warren Johnson's slower 7.76. Johnson seems to think that his loss had something to do with the funny cars earlier. The track had been oiled down so well with the fuel cars, you know, and the funny car was actually, I think every round uh, they oiled it down, and we were really at a loss which lane to choose because nobody really showed any, any advantage one way or another on either lane, so I don't think it was really a, a good lane, so to speak, at all. And speaking of pro stocks, it appears that the factory hot rods are already in the lanes ready for round number two. So let's go back to Dave. Steve, in the second round of pro stock racing, the upset-minded Stan Mizell looking for another victim. This time he races a Camaro very similar to his own. Mizell, making the switch from sportsman racing about a year ago, bases his operation in Green Cove Springs, Florida, while his opponent, Jerry Ekman, hails from Ventura, California. Ekman beat Don Beverly in the first round. Both cars staging very carefully, trying for every advantage possible. Mizell in the near lane, Ekman in the far lane, and Ekman red lights. He leaves the starting line too soon. Mizell is the automatic winner. You can't leave that starting line too quick, or the electronic system will catch you and indicate your disqualification with a red light. A big break, moving Mizell into the semifinals. The next race, again, matching a pair of General Motors products, a Pontiac Trans Am and a Chevy Camaro. The Firebird, driven by Mark Powick of Medina, Ohio, beat Ronnie Manchester in the first round, while Bruce Allen, driving the rare and Morrison Camaro, beat Butch Leal in his first round encounter. The Quaker State North Star Nationals, the first major event that Mark Powick has even qualified for, thus making his first round win even more impressive. But Bruce Allen on the far side of the track finished number three in the World Championship chase last season. He's definitely the strong favorite in this pair. A flash of the green light and both cars leave the starting line side by side. Allen gets an early lead, holds on to it and takes the win with a speed of over 182 miles an hour. That's one of the strongest Chevrolet Pro Stockers in the country, Bruce Allen. Gordy Rivera enjoying an excellent season thus far in NHRA Championship drag racing. He qualified well here at Brainerd. Again, this race, a matchup of Chevy versus Pontiac. Dempsey Hardy of Vero Beach, Florida, took his Firebird to a win over Frank Iaconio in round number one, while Yuma, Arizona's Gordy Rivera won out over Joe Lapone Jr. Both Rivera and Hardy staging very carefully. They're rolling their cars forward ever so gently into those electronic light beams that indicate the starting line. A green light start, a great start for both drivers. The two cars launching off the starting line. This is a great side-by-side -side race, and at the finish, by about a fender length, Dempsey Hardy wins it with a 7.63 second elapsed time. The final pairing of these very sophisticated race cars called Pro Stockers finds the classic Ford versus GM battle being waged. Bob Glidden came into the event as the national record holder, now owns the track records as well. He beat David Hutchins in round number one. Lee Dean, driving the Pontiac Firebird out of Northeast Maryland, defeated Don Koontz. Pro Stock rules call for a maximum engine size of 500 cubic inches with a car weight of 2,350 pounds, including the driver, making these thousand horsepower cars quite a handful to drive. Dean's got the advantage off the starting line, but he has some problems, and he slows as Clinton goes on for the win. 7.52 seconds, 184 miles an hour for Bob Glidden. 
That sets up the semi-final round. It will be Bob Glidden and the T-Bird against Stan Mizell's Chevy Camaro. Glidden has the lane choice in that race. The other pair in the semi-finals, the Chevy Camaro of Bruce Allen against the Pontiac Firebird of Dempsey Hardy, with Bruce Allen having lane choice. The 1986 North Star Nationals is being brought to you by Quaker State. Quaker State, the big Q stands for quality, always has, always will. And by Fram Bendix Auto Life, which are all quality products of Allied Automotive. And by Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Goodyear, Goodyear Eagles. You either have Goodyear Eagles, or you need them. We'll be right back to the Quaker State North Star Nationals. Back at Brainerd International Raceway near Brainerd, Minnesota, this is the Quaker State North Star Nationals, and we're set for round number two competition in Top Fuel Eliminator. Both drivers have completed their burnouts and are backing into their own tracks, getting set to start the staging procedure. In round number one, Dick LaHaye of Lansing, Michigan, defeated the defending North Star Nationals champ, Connie Coletta, while Dan Pastorini beat Gary Ormsby. This is a great matchup. Pastorini has won his first ever NHRA national event this season, winning the Southern Nationals in Atlanta, Georgia. Meantime, LaHaye has two runner-up finishes to his credit thus far this season. The two cars rolling forward into the staging beam. Pastorini smokes the tires immediately, and LaHaye has an easy run, but he doesn't back out of it. 5.59 seconds, his speed over 253 miles an hour. For Pastorini, a tough break, losing traction right off the starting line. Here is Shirley Maldowney. Shirley is matched against Ray Stutz, a California racer that has gone on the national event trail this season. We've seen him several times on our USA Sports coverage of NHRA Championship Drag Racing. Stutz calls Laverne, California home. That's located right next to Pomona, the home of the NHRA Winter Nationals. He defeated Jerry Marconi in the first round here at Brainerd. While Shirley Muldowney, we saw her win over Joe Amato. Let's go down to the far end of the racetrack where Steve has had a chance to catch up to the winner, Dick LaHaye. Well, as Dan Pastorini wildly smokes the tires, Dick LaHaye clean and dry to a nice 5.59. It went on, got loose, and it shook the tires pretty hard out there, but we thought it was going to, and we tried to take a little bit out of it, and I think it's going to be okay, but, you know, we're having kind of a, a funny situation here. I don't think we've ever raced here in this kind of air, and... We can make more power than we figure that we can. Shirley's crew chief, Ron Tobler, checking on the motor, keeping his eye on the starting line, making sure everything is well in hand. As Shirley approaches those staging beams, Ray Stutz, here on the near side of the track, rolls his solid disc front wheels into those light beams. They're staged, and a good start. Shirley smokes the tires. What a great race. Shirley with the horsepower pulls it out by a car lane. And Shirley Muldowney at 5.55 seconds of lap time, over 260 miles an hour, smoking the tires, but still getting the win. This is Gene Snow, the veteran racer from Dallas, Texas, that defeated the number one qualifier in the first round as he beat young Daryl Quinn. Providing the competition for snow is John Carey driving the Keenan and Pike car. Carey had three top fuel dragsters in competition at this event. The other two, driven by Jody Smart and Hank Endres, have been eliminated. John Carey defeated Gary Beck in the first round, while Gene Snow is enjoying some of his finest performances ever on any racetrack. Both Snow and Carey are utilizing some of the aerodynamic devices pioneered by Don Garlitz, most particularly that canopy over the driver's cockpit. Shirley Muldowney, a nice piece of driving. A lost traction, you pedal it, still a 555. Oh, Steve, I really wanted to hear that. You know, the last thing Tobler said to me, he's a good lever, and I had that on my mind. I was really concerned. Back at the starting line, John Carey in the near lane, Gene Snow in the far lane. There you see a graphic example of the different sizes of the front tires used in drag racing today. Snow using the small 13-inchers, while the more conventional size for John Carey. Carey has problems, and Snow is off on a single run. And Gene Snow, 5.65 seconds, his speed over 244 miles an hour, advances into the semifinals. A big break for Snow. 
Here's Eddie Hill. You remember him last at the starting line at the Mile High Nationals. His car unable to back up. They tried to get it back to the starting line as you watched here on USA Sports, but Hill was not able to make the run in the finals. Thus, Larry Miner took a single for the championship. Today, it is a match of veterans in the second round at the North Star Nationals. Eddie Hill and Don Garlitz go back to the late 1950s. Hill was driving a Pontiac engine dragster that used carburetors with nitromethane, while Garlitz has a swamp rat. Hill dropped out of the sport for nearly 10 years, went boat racing back in a season ago. Garlitz has nearly 30 years' experience behind the wheel of a top fuel dragster. Many regard him as the finest drag racer ever to travel the quarter-mile racetrack. Previous race winner Gene Snow out of his car, Steve's with him. Oh, Gene, at 565, this is hard work sometimes, isn't it? Well, it is for an old fat man. <laughs> a nice one, though. Oh, thank you very much. We're getting closer and closer with these Vinny heads. We're real pleased. But you'll maybe need another tenth or better than that to win the thing. I had to backpedal in low gear. It would run a little bit better. Yeah, we're real pumped. All right, thanks, Gene. Gene Snow, using the Ken Vini heads, developed specifically for these top fuel nitro-burning dragsters and funny cars. Eddie Hill in the near lane. Don Garlitz in the far lane. A green light and smoke off the tires for Eddie Hill. Garlitz with a huge lead and getting bigger by the second. It is Garlitz winning 5.59 seconds. His speed 257 miles an hour. And that sets up the semifinal bearings here at the North Star Nationals in Top Fuel Eliminator. Don Garlitz will race Gene Snow. Two great veterans, Garlitz having the all-important lane choice. While Shirley Muldowney takes on a fellow Michigander, Dick LaHaye. Muldowney having lane choice. We noticed we've seen a couple of cars now both smoke the tires in the right lane. Is the lane as Im the lane's as imbalanced as they look to be? I don't know. It, the, the, the right lane has not been real good today. Okay, so lane choice could be very, very important. Very important. Yes, it is. Okay. We'll see if he's got it, Dave. Steve got it. He does. Don Garlitz has the lane choice as he goes in against Gene Snow. At the starting line, the funny car's getting ready. We'll be right back. At the Quaker State North Star Nationals at Brainerd International Raceway, we're set for round number two, racing in Funny Car Eliminator. In the lane nearest the camera, it is Tom McEwen driving his Corvette body entry. Alongside him is Tim Gross. McEwen had a single in the first round when his competition, Doc Holliday, broke. But ever the showman, McEwen had a wheel stand and he carried it several hundred feet down track. For Tim Gross, his first round win came at the expense of Norm Day. As we saw earlier, Day okay, some slight burns as a result of that horrendous fire that allowed Tim Gross to go on and take the first round victory. Gross in the far lane, McEwen in the near lane. The funny cars utilizing the same 2,500 horsepower plus engine combination as we've seen in the top fuel dragsters and a great start. Gross and McEwen side by side and McEwen pulls ahead and takes the win. Tom McEwen a fine 576. Gross parachute a little late coming out but he's got it well in hand and Tom McEwen advances into the semifinals. Our next pair, Billy Meyer in the lane nearest the camera. Racing against Billy Meyer will be a Minnesota-based entry. This is Tom Hoover. Hoover, a crowd favorite with the Minnesota fans here at Brainerd International Raceway, has been enjoying a great season thus far. Meyer driving his Mustang-bodied car out of Waco, Texas, got the break of the race. When Kenny Bernstein red-lighted against him in the first round, Tom Hoover raced another Minnesota-based funny car, Daryl Amberson, and Hoover came out the winner. Hoover, for years driving a Corvette-bodied car, switched to the Trans Am body this season. Well, so far, this has been a good race for Tom the Mongoose McEwen. You're in the semifinals, my friend, at 576-255. He made a nice run. It was, I ran my exhibition car the last round, the wheel stander, you saw that? And uh, in my younger days, I would have tried to run it through, but in the middle of the track, it was going about 200 miles an hour. I figured it wasn't ever going to come down, so I shut it off. And when it did come down, it came down hard. We're looking at it right now. Yeah, it, uh, it bent some stuff on the front end, and we had to fix it. But Were you a little concerned with the lane you had? No. We've run both sides this week and haven't really seemed to have much trouble with either lane. So. Okay. Well, let's keep the front wheels down, huh? Maybe you can win this thing. Thank you very much.
Steve, back on the starting line, Tom Hoover approaching the staging beams in the far lane of the racetrack. His crew chief is his dad, who celebrated just very recently his 80th birthday. In the near lane, the car driven by Billy Meyer. It's a good start for both drivers. Meyer appears to have an advantage, but Hoover's right alongside of him. And at the finish line, by inches, Tom Hoover pulls it out. 5.91 seconds. His speed, 256 miles an hour. Tom Hoover in a close win over Billy Meyer. As we look again at the start, it is all Billy Meyer. The advantage going to the Mustang-bodied car who pulls ahead of Tom Hoover driving the Trans Am. But at the far end of the course, Meyer's engine starts to go away. And Tom Hoover slowly but surely pulls ahead for the win. Well, Tom McEwen just yelled over at Tom Hoover. He said, Tom, let's both get in the finals, and it could be the battle of the King Corvettes. A 591, not that quick, but it got, it got the job done. It did. We were scared of the track. We actually went up for a little too soft on power, but uh, we'll get after this next run. It'll be a good race between me and McEwen. Steve, we'll look forward to that. Two great veterans going at it in Funny Car Eliminator. At the starting line, the burnout's completed. In the near lane is Ed McCulloch. He has tasted victory already twice this season. In the far lane is Johnny West. He defeated Brad Tuttle in round number one. West driving for his car owner, Roland Leon. Ed McCulloch defeated Dello Woods to advance into round number two competition. The Roland Leong based car has had a series of great drivers over the years, and Johnny West is most capably filling the shoes of the drivers that preceded him. The Oldsmobile Forenza of Ed McCulloch has been in the winner's circle at the Gator Nationals and the Southern Nationals thus far, but the Dodge Daytona of Johnny West is giving him a run for his money. And just at the finish line, Ed McCulloch pulls away to take the win. A 5.86 second elapsed time, his speed 254 miles an hour, and Johnny West almost defeated Ed McCulloch. As we watch again, you can see just how close it was. West and McCulloch side by side as they pass the Christmas tree. Halfway down the racetrack, the two cars are almost even. But as they approach the finish line, McCulloch puts on a burst of speed, reaching 254 miles an hour, and the big win. Had everybody's big concern is smoking the tires. You managed to pedal it down there nicely, a 586 disposed of Mr. West. Well, you know, it's a real tricky racetrack, you know, and uh, we talked about it, you know, just before this round. We says, uh, you know, should we put a gearbox in it and really go for it, or should we try not to smoke the tires? So we're trying not to smoke the tires. So the conservative approach has won you two races this year. I'll take them anyway we get them, Steve-O. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> <laughs> and take of he will, Ed McCulloch into the semifinals. Our next race, a match of champions. In the near lane, the man that won this race back in 1984, this is Mark Oswald driving for the team of Candice and Hughes. In the first round, Oswald defeated Scott Coletta. His competition is Jim Head, the defending North Star Nationals champ who beat John Force in a round one upset. Head from Columbus, Ohio, still looking for his first win this season. His last came at this event one year ago. For Mark Oswald, we saw him just a couple of weeks ago win the Mile High Nationals in Denver, Colorado, right here on USA Sports. Oswald with the advantage off the starting line and trying to give chase, but Oswald by a couple of car lengths takes the win and moves into the semifinals. A great time for the Candies and Hughes team. 5.75 seconds at 257 miles an hour for that Pontiac Firebird. A huge crowd waiting in anticipation for the semifinals where Mark Oswald has lane choice over Ed McCulloch and two longtime friends, Tom McEwen and Tom Hoover. Go at it with McEwen having lane choice. Well, for Mark Oswald, the wind lights just keep coming. That's your sixth wind light counting Denver a few weeks ago. A 575 did it. Yeah, if we can keep it steady like that, I think we'll be looking good, you know. Kenny Bernstein and John Force had a little misfortune in the first round. They kind of gave us the ball. We just don't want to drop it. The talented hands of Big Daddy Don Garland readying his car for the semifinal round of Top Fuel Racing at the Quaker State North Star Nationals. Back at the Quaker State, North Star Nationals, I'm Dave McClelland, along with Steve Evans, and literally hundreds of fans have jammed around Shirley Muldowney. Miss Muldowney, could I have an autograph, too? You certainly can, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> the pen has any ink left. 
The fans are a lot of fun, aren't they? They're wonderful. They're it's it's a compliment when you simply cannot sign them all. You know, I would think also that for you, doing this would be a, a way to while away the time as opposed to the fretting and worrying and pacing about what's going to happen next. That's right, Steve. That's that's exactly the way it is. But I see I have the time to do this because I'm not working on the car. Uh, we'll say Big Daddy, for instance, he doesn't have the time, and he, I, see, I see his signature a lot throughout sure. the weekend, and I, I give him a lot of credit for taking the time. I have it, he doesn't. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks, Steve. Okay. I want my autograph, though. Oh, okay. you got it, my friend. <laughs> Shirley Muldowney having a good time before her semifinal race with Dick LaHaye. It's time now for Pro Stocks. Here is Bob Glidden. His wife, Etta, serves as crew chief. Their two sons, Billy and Rusty, work on that Ford Thunderbird. In the near lane is the man that has been the upset champion thus far of this North Star Nationals. This is Stan Mizell, driving the Chevrolet Camaro against the record-holding world champion Ford Thunderbird of Bob Glidden. Both drivers taking their times, trying to build some heat, possibly in the motor, maybe trying to gain a psychological advantage over the competitor. And it's a red light start for Mizell. He tries for the whole shot, but leaves too soon. Glidden keeps the throttle down on that Thunderbird, and Glidden goes through with an elapsed time of 7.52 seconds, 185 miles an hour. Remarkable consistency out of that Ford T-Bird. Here's the Chevy Camaro. This is Bruce Allen racing against the Pontiac Trans Am Firebird of Dempsey Hardy. Allen in the far lane of the racetrack at the wheel of the car, owned by David Rare and Buddy Morrison. Here's Steve. Well, Bob Glidden, you've got some consistency. Stan Mizell red-lighted, but you still hammered it home with a 752-185. Nice numbers. I thought, you know, the air's getting a little cooler. Uh, Stan, I owed him one. At Denver, he, uh, I think he left on me about a tenth of a second from the starting line. Uh, I tried to be a little bit more ready, and I thought it was a really good run. Glidden will face one of these two drivers in the finals, either Bruce Allen in the far lane or Dempsey Hardy in the near lane. Hardy's car, owned by Jerry Hurley and Jeff Veldy. Both cars leave the starting line together. A great start for Dempsey Hardy. He's got the advantage over Bruce Allen, but look at Allen go on to the Camaro of Rare and Morrison, and Bruce Allen takes the win. 7.61 seconds and 180 miles an hour, about a tenth of a second slower than the time recorded by Bob Glidden. Let's look at this race again as Dempsey Hardy gets about a three hundredth of a second advantage off the starting line. But the horsepower of the rare and Morrison Camaro comes into play once they reach half track. Bruce Allen just keeps the foot down and holds on as he pulls ahead of Dempsey Hardy, approaching the finish line, which is 1,320 feet away from the starting line, one quarter of a mile from a standing start. That's championship drag racing, and this is a big win for Bruce Allen in the Camaro. Well, if you like your pro stock action, Ford versus Chevrolet, you're going to love the final here at Brainerd. Bruce Allen for Chevrolet against Bob Glidden. A 761. You'd hope for a bit better. Yeah, I would like to run a little bit better. We still got a little shake in it. Just have to go back and work and get that out of it. But I think we, I think we can do it. That sets up the finals for Pro Stock Eliminator Bob Glidden against Bruce Allen with Glidden having lane choice. Here's a program reminder for you coming up on Monday, September 22nd at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. USA Sports will be on hand to bring you all the action of the Keystone Nationals from Reading, Pennsylvania. Big trouble in Ed McCulloch's pit area. Manpower being used to muscle in a new racing engine between the frame rails getting ready for the semifinals at the Quaker State North Star Nationals. While we were away, Don Garlitz took advantage of the break in the action to board a minibike to check out the racing surface. If you like the action you're seeing here, don't forget, coming up the 26th through the 28th of September, it's the Chief Nationals at the brand new Texas Motorplex near Dallas, Texas. Steve Evans is in the pits talking to a resident of Dallas, Buddy Morrison. Buddy Morrison, your driver Bruce Allen thinks that if you can get this car to quit shaking that he can run head to head with Bob Glidden. What do you do to the automobile to try to satisfy him? Well, I don't think we can really get it going head to head with Glidden at this short time. Uh, all we can do is just the suspension. It really needs a, a shock and a spring change for this track, and that's uh, that's pretty hard to do at this uh, short notice. But we're, we're planning on working on that in the future, and right now we're just going to adjust it to do as well as we can. 
Steve, as always, at all championship drag racing events, time becoming a factor between rounds, getting these cars ready, as Buddy Morrison explained on that Chevy Camaro Pro Stock. Here's top fuel. The burnout's completed. Dick LaHaye in the near lane. His crew chief is his daughter, Kim LaHaye. She performs the heavy work on this car. The female of this team is the driver. This is Shirley Muldowney. Her crew chief is Ron Tobler, along with her son, John Muldowney, and she's doing exceptionally well, making it here into the semifinals against Dick LaHaye. Tobler, again, checking over the engine, checking over the starting line, making sure everything is right. The dramatic story of Shirley's comeback from that horrendous accident two years ago is well known. She's proving her worth here, as does this young lady. This is Kim LaHaye. Her dad, Dick, will give her the credit that she is justly due for the work she performs as crew chief on this top fuel dragster. Shirley Muldowney in the far lane. Dick LaHaye in the near lane. The two cars coming into those light beams, indicating they're ready to race. A green light started. Dick LaHaye pulls ahead. Shirley Muldowney smoking the tires, has some problems, and LaHaye moves into the finals. 5.61 seconds. His speed over 252 miles an hour. LaHaye had the starting line advantage. Baldowney had some problems, so it's Dick LaHaye into the finals to meet either Don Garlitz or Gene Snow. These two cars are very similar in appearance, as Gene Snow has picked up on a lot of the aerodynamic tricks developed by Don Garlitz, including the canopy and the small front wheels. Let's go to Steve. Dick, another sensational driving job in a 561. Well, thank you very much, Steve. It, you know, we didn't have lane choice. We knew the lane was going to be bad. and We just calmed it down a little bit, and I tried to leave on time, and I guess I was on time. Indeed, you were. seeing the finals. Thank you very much. Garlitz, at the age of 54, is the reigning world champion, and proving that age is no handicap in the sport of top fuel racing, is leading the points chase this season, trying to be the first person ever to win consecutive top fuel world championships. Garlitz is feeling the challenge, though, of the newcomer Daryl Gwynn and Dick LaHaye. So LaHaye is already into the finals. Every round win is most important in that world championship points chase, and Gene Snow knows it. As we say, the two cars looking very similar. They've got the canopies over the drivers, and at the front end, it is the very small front wheels using the 13-inch tires that are built exclusively for racing. Gene Snow in the near lane. Don Garlitz in the far lane. And Garlitz with the advantage off the starting line. Snow giving chase, but to no avail. And it is Don Garlitz against Dick LaHaye in the finals. 5.56 seconds, his speed 256 miles an hour. That sets it up, the final race in Top Fuel Eliminator. Two veterans, Dick LaHaye against Don Garlitz, with Garlitz having what may be the all-important lane choice. At the starting line, it is semi-final round of Funny Car Eliminator. This is Tom McEwen. The burnouts designed to heat the tires to their maximum efficiency to get them as clean as possible and most importantly to lay some rubber on the ground. Here's the other Tom of this matchup. This is Tom Hoover. Hoover now using a Pontiac Trans Am body, formerly a great Corvette racer, and he and McEwen have had many a battle over the years. Donna, 556, but it looked like the parachute might have been out a little early. Yeah, I hit the uh, chute lever instead of the enrichment valve. I just kind of jarred myself in there, and I missed it. And they're very close together. Well, it's a good thing you waited to the last minute to go for the enrichment valve, or it, we might have a different final. That's exactly right. You know, Shirley Muldowney and Dick LaHaye, uh, you were looking forward, I think, to maybe racing Shirley again. Well, you bet, because, you know, she really needs it. Uh, she, you know, it'd be so nice for her to be in the final. She's worked so hard this year, and it just hadn't been a real good year for her. Yeah, and you didn't need to see Dick LaHaye get any more points either. That's right. <laughs> I mean, let's tell the truth here. You've got lane choice over it. Yeah, that, I like that. I think the, the left is better, at least right now. It, it gives you a little better confidence having lane choice, because if there's an oil down or something, at least you got a choice. I'll let you get back and get to work. Thank you. Steve, Don Garland's obviously enjoying himself at the Quaker State North Star Nationals. This is Tom McEwen in the near lane. His crew chief, Bill Schultz, taking over at the start of the season, has certainly helped the performance of McEwen. For Tom Hoover, his crew chief, as I told you earlier, is 80-year-old father. McEwen and Hoover off the starting line. and something going wrong for Hoover? McEwen through the finish line, a hard run. 5.83 seconds. 
seconds. That'll move McEwen into the finals for the third time this season. A tough break for Tom Hoover, but a great showing here at the North Star Nationals. All the work appears to have paid off for the Larry Miner car driven by Ed McCulloch. The Oldsmobile Forenza car with a brand new engine between the frame rails and under the body completes his burnout. Tom McEwen, what were you mumbling before you got your helmet off? That was the important race of the day. That was for King Corvette <laughs> of the Northwest, which I love coming up here and beating Hoover, my old buddy. This has been going on for a long time. 30 years. 583, 259. It did? Yeah. That's too fast. <laughs> Scare you? I better shut off a little sooner next time. But that means you got a lot of horsepower. Can you, uh, can you make a lapse time with that? I think so. Uh, it depends on what Schultz wants to do. He's just, he's going to race. It'll be him and Leonard Hughes looking at each other now, so I imagine he'll turn the wick up a little bit. <laughs> so Tommy McEwen is already forecasting a Mark Oswald one here. Let's go back to the starting line and find out. Steve Leonard Hughes, the very talented crew chief on the Pontiac of Mark Oswald, standing behind the car, directing traffic, along with the car owner, Paul Candies, who's out in front of Mark Oswald. But, of course, Bernie Federley, the crew chief for Ed McCulloch, and that whole team may have something to say about McEwen's prediction. Mark Oswald has been a winner thus far this season, his most recent victory at the Mile High Nationals, while Ed McCulloch has been the winner at two events this year. Oswald in the near lane, McCulloch in the far lane. A lot of work to get McCulloch's car ready. As the two cars approach the staging beams, the drivers concentrating on the start. The start in drag racing, one of the all-important factors. It's very difficult to overcome a disadvantage you may leave at the starting line. Oswald smokes the tires. That's his disadvantage, and look at McCulloch go. And some problems for McCulloch as a lot of smoke comes out of the car. The car slowing very, very quickly as he brings it to a quick stop. And a tough break for Mark Oswald. That sets up the final. Tom McEwen against Ed McCulloch, a rematch of the Gator Nationals. Ed McCulloch, you stopped very quickly right after the finish line. A problem? Yeah, Steve, you just put the rods out of it. So. And you just changed motors. Yeah. So we got a lot of work to do. I don't know what... Uh... I don't know. Anybody that thinks this professional drag racing is a glamorous lifestyle didn't see you guys change engines, and now you'll have to build another. Do you have the parts to build another one? Well, we'll get something together. I mean, you know, we've been hurting it all weekend here, you know, been burning it, and we found a fuel pump just before that run. Fuel pump was dead, and so we changed fuel pumps, but uh, right there, just put the rods out of it, so we got a lot of work to do. And when you put the rods out, there's always a chance of a fire. Good thing you get it stopped quickly. Well, Steve, you know, this... Her Miller American race team works real darn hard on this deal, and, uh, you know, the NHRA rules say we need the front wheel brakes. I mean, the finish line's right there, and I'm stopped. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have done that two years ago. Could you take the motor out of Gary Beck's field or extra if you had to, sure the no team could. car? We can do it if we have to. Okay, we'll be watching. A lot of work facing Ed McCulloch and a lot of work going on in Dick LaHaye's pit area. That's Kim under the car, working on the mount, getting it ready for the finals against Don Garland. action, the order of the day in Ed McCulloch's scenario. The crew hard at work putting in yet another new engine. Meantime, things have slowed down just a little bit for Shirley Muldowney. Well, the lady doesn't leave here with a top fuel title, but she leaves with a big smile on her face because the car ran well. It ran really well. We learned a lot. Uh, the guys did every, every... No one made a mistake here today. We, again, parts failure. And they're praising your driving even though you lost because you got off of that pedal and saved the engine for them. They love that. Yeah, I'm so saving my pocketbook, Steve. It's yeah. been a very expensive year uh, up to this point. And again, you know, parts failure, and it's really broke our back. So, you know, we're just we're looking forward to Indy now. And I've had a, a gut feeling. <laughs> Another U.S. Nationals titles? I just have a good feeling, and it wouldn't surprise me. We're real capable, and that is definitely the one to win. That would, that would top my whole year. Well, as you know by the crowd around this trailer, there's certainly a lot of people out there pulling for you. A lot of, a lot of dedicated fans here. I think they like the sport in, overall, but I was overwhelmed this weekend. Nice job. Thank you, Steve. On the starting line, Steve, it is time for the Pro Stock Final. The burnouts are completed. The two drivers now thinking about what do they have to do to get to that finish line first. 
On the far side of the track, bearing the big number one, is the reigning world champion. He has won that title six times. He is the winningest drag racing driver in history, Bob Glidden, winner of 47 national events. In the near lane is Bruce Allen making his first final round appearance of 1986. He was runner-up here one year ago at the North Star National. Glidden gets the advantage off the starting line. As they head to the finish line, the Ford versus Chevrolet battle, it is the Ford Thunderbird. Bob Glidden wins the race, a high five between Rusty and Billy Glidden. 7.51 seconds, low elapsed time of the meet for Bob Glidden in his winning effort, the second in a row. As you remember, he won the Mile High Nationals. Let's look again. You see Glidden with the wheels in the air on that T-Bird, comes off the starting line and immediately picks up a very slight advantage over Bruce Allen. As they reach the midpoint in the track, he continues to extend that lead until at the finish line, Bob Glidden and the Ford Thunderbird go into the winner's circle by a substantial margin. Bob Glidden wins his second Quaker State North Star Nationals in a row. He wins his second national event this year in a row, a 7.51, champion. Thank you very much, Steve. Boy, it was a good race. I, I knew these guys have been gaining ground on us all weekend. I think uh, it was a good starting line leave and... Uh, yep, you were out first. Well, it couldn't have been much. Come on over, Bruce. Can you get Bruce in here for a minute? What were you guys doing on the starting line there? It looked like uh, neither one of you really wanted the race to go off, huh? I, need, I needed my engine to warm up a little bit. I did. How about you, Bruce? Uh, we were just getting ready. Hey. It just takes time. It was a good race. I'll tell you what, these guys have run really well this weekend. I'm just... Uh, I, I'm... I can more, tell. I'm more pleased with this deal than I was with Denver, and I was overjoyed there. There they are, the winner and the runner-up, Bob Glidden, the champion, here at Brainerd. Steve, on the starting line, it is time for the Top Fuel Eliminator final, but there is only one car. It is Don Garlitz, Herb Parks, his crew chief, closing down the canopy. Dick LaHaye was slated to run Garlitz, but apparently mechanical problems have set in, and Garlitz will make a single for the Top Fuel title at the North Star Nationals. The question is, will he just coast through, or will Garlitz, ever the showman, make a hard run? We'll find out in just a moment. He is staging now. And Garland gets the green light. It's a hard charge off the starting line. And he holds it down all the way through. Garland, 5.56 seconds at 259 miles an hour. And the fans just love it. That's his 32nd top fuel title for Big Daddy Don Garland. He brings the car to a relatively quick stop. It is still out on the racetrack. Meantime, back in the funny car pit area, Tom McEwen and his crew putting the finishing touches on that racing engine, getting it ready for the final round race against Ed McCulloch. Steve's had a chance to catch up to our top fuel champ. Well, Dave, if you're wondering why Big Daddy got the car stopped so quickly, take a look at that. He's got a blown left front tire. And, Don, uh, what do you think happened? I don't know. It must have run over something sharp in the lights because it was yeah. a brand new tire, and it's the new Goodyear Eagle, especially for right. racing. It's not even like an airplane tire. All you had to do was idle down the racetrack. You gave the fans a 556, 259. I know they appreciated it. Well, good. Congratulations. First time you've won here, and a good yeah. one. Thank you. Okay. Steve, things aren't quite so calm in Ed McCulloch's pit area. His crew for the second round in a row installing a brand new engine. We'll be seeing the Funny Car Finals in just a moment. One race remains at the Quaker State North Star Nationals. The finals in Funny Car. In the near lane, Tom McEwen, the far lane Ed McCulloch. A rematch of the final round at the NHRA Gator Nationals earlier this year when Ed McCulloch won that race. Meantime, back in the pit area, Steve is with our top fuel finalist, Dick LaHaye. You and Kim, uh, you work in this car yourself. You don't use a lot of fancy air wrenches. You kind of have your own, your own pace, and, and it bit you a little bit here. Yes, it did. It, uh, we had heard one piston. And that enabled, we had to take one cylinder head off. And normally we don't have to do that. And it just, it caught up with us here. A tough break for two great racers, Dick and Kim LaHaye. A lot of work went on for Ed McCulloch to get him to this point. But he is approaching the starting line in that far lane to race against Tom McEwen for the title of Funny Car Eliminator at the North Star Nationals. Both cars into the staging beams. And McEwen on first. McCulloch has problems. And McEwen is your Funny Car champion. 
the finish line, a fine 5.81 second elapsed time. His speed over 254 miles an hour. Tom McEwen wins an NHRA national event for the second time this season. As we look again, you see McEwen off first and McCulloch instantly having problems. The car slowing and McEwen wins the race. So uh, we had a good weekend and, and Coors will be real happy and... And you avenged uh, that Gator Nationals final when Ed McCullough yes, got you when you couldn't yeah. start. I, uh, at Gainesville, we had a little problem on the starting line. He made a single, and uh, he's a great competitor. Yes, the old man of the sport. Don Garland's coming in to congratulate Tom McEwen. This is his 3,000th 85 national win in my second. <laughs> <laughs> but this one means a lot to both of you. Yeah, you know something? And, uh, you know, he's got that museum down in, uh, not just not a commercial, but he's got that great museum down there. You've got a shrine in that in museum. Yes, he has. That's and, and I have. And he bowed down to it. He said, this is a shrine. And I have a car in that thing, you know, so anybody out there, get a chance. Come and visit the museum, boy, because it's a great place. <laughs> Celebrate, gentlemen. You deserve it. Steve, there are two very happy racers, as are all of our champions. Our congratulations to them at this Quaker State North Star Nationals. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan saying so long from Brainerd, Minnesota. The executive producer of Diamond B Sports is Harvey M. Ballish. Supervising producer is John B. Mullen. Produced and directed by Ron Giles. The 1986 Quaker State North Star Nationals has been brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Fram Bendix Auto Life, which are all quality products of Allied Automotive. And by National Dragster, Drag Racing's leading news weekly. And by Ford. Have you driven a Ford lately? Coverage of the 1986 NHRA North...